This is Ms. Monson from Shady Rook, and this video is about using arrays and breaking apart to solve multiplication problems. Arrays are a newer tool used in the classroom. It's a way to show students what's going on in a multiplication or division problem, and it really helps them get an image that they can keep with them as we move into more abstract multiplication and division in fourth grade and beyond. An array is a rectangle that's broken down into smaller squares. This array shows 3 times 4. One side of the rectangle is four squares long, the other side is three squares long. We have three rows of four squares each, for a total of 12 squares. In third grade, we'll start with very concrete pictures. We'll be able to see all of the squares so that we can count them if we need to. We're really going to focus on the equal groups and how to find the total. Over time, we'll move to more abstract arrays. We might just see one column and be told how many are in each row. For instance, this array shows five times eight. We can see the 8, but not the 5. We know the 5 are there, so we can count by 5s to find the total. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Next, we'll start using open arrays. These are very helpful when we want to start breaking multiplication problems apart. We'll do this for problems like 7 times 8, where counting by either number is tricky. We'll draw and label our open array, and then decide which number we want to break up and how we want to break it. There are lots of different ways to break this array apart that will get us the correct answer. I tend to emphasize fives, twos, and other numbers that kids are usually familiar with. Let's look at one example. If we split the seven into five and two, we've made two smaller arrays. Put together, they're the same size as the original array, but the smaller numbers are easier to work with. So this array is five times eight, and this array is two times eight. So let's start with five times eight, which is 40. And a kid who doesn't know that automatically will quickly count by fives, while well, 2 times 8 equals 16. When we put the arrays together, we have a total of 56, so we know that 7 times 8 equals 56. Some kids see that 8 and want to break it into half, into 4 and 4. That gives us two equal sized arrays. Well, 4 times 7 equals 28, so this array will also be 28, and 28 plus 28 equals 56. Let's take a look at one more example, 14 times 6. We'll use these open arrays for multiplication facts we don't yet have memorized, but we'll also use them when we move on to multiplying two-digit times one-digit numbers. And for more information on that, there's a whole video that explains the steps in teaching two-digit times one-digit multiplication. So first we'll draw our open array and label it. Then we decide what number we're breaking apart. Because I don't have any times 14 facts memorized, I'm going to break that apart. 14 is 10 and 4, and I love numbers with zeros. But I'm feeling a little lazy, and I don't want to solve 4 times 6, so I'm going to break that 4 into two twos. So I have 2 times 6, 2 times 6, and 10 times 6. 2 times 6 equals 12, 2 twelves is 24, 10 times 6 equals 60, and 60 plus 24 equals 84. As I've said in other videos, we're really looking to develop some flexibility in the way your child thinks about and uses numbers. Being able to break apart and manipulate numbers in this way will make mathematics easier, because problems are interrelated, not a bunch of separate facts that just need to be memorized. Once your child can break apart problems in this way, it's a great time to start working on fact memorization. You just don't want to start memorizing multiplication facts until your child has a really solid base for what multiplication looks like and how to solve problems in different ways. This is Ms. Monson, and this video is all about breaking apart and using arrays to multiply.